friends, I'm Tracy, and uh, today I'm here to talk about how I get that really nice satin finish that a lot of people keep asking me about. Some have described it as a sort of buttery satin finish or a really nice gray satin finish. So hopefully I can accomplish this little lesson in a few minutes, and uh, let's get started. Here are a few things that you're going to need to achieve that uh, satin finish. Um, these are one inch sanding discs and I get these on Amazon. As a matter of fact, I'll post a link to all of these uh, products in the description. So one inch sanding discs, they go on this uh, thing that I use for my Dremel. And I'm starting with 400, 800. The pack I just got in the mail didn't come with 600, but that's okay, we'll skip it. Move on to 1000 and then finally 1200 um, to sand your piece with. You'll also need one of these. Actually, I use the black ones, not the tan ones. There we go. These are Scotch-Brite um, polishing wheels. I also get these on Amazon. They're not very expensive, and I get them in a pack of like 150 or something like that. I like the gray ones and the black ones. The red ones uh, and the tan ones work but they tend to be a little bit coarser, so these are a finer grit. But when I run out of these, I do switch on over to the other colors that are in the box. Um, and of course, you'll need a piece of silver or a project that you're working on. For today's purposes, I'm just using this piece of scrap silver that I melted down and put through the rolling mill a couple of times. You can see it's pretty grimed up. And I just stamped a, a heart on it, an anatomical heart. And the anatomical heart, by the way, I got from the Modern Toolsmith on Instagram. He is pretty awesome, although I'll warn you ahead of time, uh, his tools usually are on about a five week um, delay because he makes them all by hand, but they are amazing tools and they are really um, beautiful tools as well. So there's that. You'll also need baking soda. Some of you in overseas countries might call this sodium bicarbonate right there. Um, but baking soda and Black Max, Midas Black Max. That's what's going to patina our piece. I get this at Rio Grande. And again, I'll post a link to all these products in the description. All right, so I like to just set everything up on a rubber block. I don't know why, just something to rest my hand on as I work. So let's get started. Let me switch up. The uh, one inch sanding discs that I was telling you about, they fit into my SR, my uh, Fordham SR, but they can also be used in a Dremel. I um, used to use a Dremel, but it was really, really fast for me. And I know some people are really talented and really adept with a Dremel, but for me, it was just way too fast. So when I got the SR, it came with the desktop version of this um, starter, I guess you'd call it. And so you can see you can do it really, really slow or turn it up faster. I never really go much faster than that. It goes all the way up to, I don't know, 5,000 RPMs. I'm not really sure what, but um, I don't ever go any faster than that. It's just not necessary. So for this, I'll keep it right about there and bring it back down here. All right. And I really don't spend a whole lot of time on each grit. Maybe a minute on each side with each of the grits of the one inch sandpaper. Especially on a Dremel, it goes really fast. Or a Dremel, I keep saying that. On my flex shaft, it goes really fast. So, you can, if you don't have a Dremel or a flex shaft, you can purchase, um, different grits of sandpaper either at your local hardware store or on uh, Amazon and what I used to do is like tape them right to my bench and then just get a piece of putty I think I have one laying around here a piece of putty right on the bench and go that'll hold it give you something to grip on and then just go back and forth you can do that in can't do that with my left hand <laughs> figure eight patterns right on the sandpaper uh, maybe 20 or 25 figure eight patterns and then flip it over and do the other side if you don't have a Dremel or a flex shaft. So that's an, always another option. 
see what I just scratched up my piece. All right, so I'm going to put this on high speed while I finish up all these different grits because I don't want to bore you with the finer details. I just noticed that I had the 10,000 out and not the 1,000. So I'm gonna switch over to the 1,000, which I've already put into my, or onto my Velcro bit and continue on this uh, process. So the one thing I didn't point out before is that, look how shiny that's gotten, is that I do do the edges as well of these through all of the grits. And you may think that a satin finish probably doesn't need to be as shiny, but I do work these pieces pretty much up into uh, the shiniest I can get them, a high polished shine. Um, yeah, this is already getting really, really shiny. It looks so nice. If you notice when you're sanding, you'll notice that the sanding discs make a scratch line of their own. But if there's a scratch line in there that is different or deeper than the scratches that the sanding, the sandpaper is making, then you need to go back over it with a heavier grit, a coarser grit. It means that you didn't, you have to kind of file or sand lower into the deeper into the piece than the scratch so as you're getting higher and higher in the grades of grit and the, the lower the number the coarser the grit if you notice that there's still like deep scratches in there you probably have to go back a uh, grade or two of sandpaper So that was the 1,000. So I ended up going all the way up to about 3,000 on that, um, on those sanding discs. And this is what I keep them all in. This is a bead organizer for uh, that you can pick up at any craft store. This is 800. And I have those labeled right on the inside of the box so I know what they are. This keeps everything nice and straight. And trust me, I've done it where I didn't know which one was which. And there's a lot of them in here, as you can see. <laughs> And I was really mad. I actually had to use it to figure out which one was which. That was annoying. Okay, so now we have our highly polished piece of uh, silver. That's got a pretty high shine. If I was going um, for a high, high shine without this um, satin finish, I probably would go all the way up to 10,000. Uh, so just keep going if that's what you're after. And then throw it in the tumble for a polish. But this is good for what we're doing today. I get a paper towel and, oh yeah, I didn't point out, you need a paintbrush and a brush for this. And here's my Midas Black Max. And I'll just dip that in there and paint over it. Look how black that gets. If you don't have this nice and clean, if you have fingerprints on it or oils from your hands, um, you'll notice it be blotchy. And that's just because it's just not clean. Go over it with a sandpaper or take it under the faucet with some dish detergent. 
And then that's good for that side. Maybe a little bit more. I love how black this stuff gets. And one of the most important things about this is to then take your piece. I already have this mixed up and dunk it in baking soda and water. You'll see it bubble up a little bit. This one's been used a couple of times. Sorry, it's grimy, but it just sits here. And just let that sit in there for, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. And then I always um, put my brush in there to clean out my brush because it gets, it tarnishes and eats away if your brush has any metal on it at all. All right, so that should be good. Take that out of there and dry it off. What the baking soda and water does, and by the way, that's about a cup and a half of water and maybe a tablespoon of uh, baking soda mixed in water. And what that does is neutralizes the acid from the Black Max. Always put the lid back on as soon as you're done. I haven't near, used nearly all of that Black Max. I've spilled nearly all of that Black Max. All right, so now we come to the fun part. Go back on my little rubber block and switch out the sanding disc bit. Put in, where's my brand new one? Here it is. The Scotch-Brite pads. This is the magic of the satin finish. I'll turn my thing on and I'm just going to go over this. I'm not even going to push on it lightly unless I have to, unless it's not taking off the black max, but just let the tool do the work. I'm going to go around, especially if I'm stamped, I have something stamped because these brushes are deep, brushes are deep and they'll take away the low part of your stamped piece. Just gonna go over that real light. I'm not even pressing. And if you're doing this with um, a stone, this won't even hurt your set stone. This won't scratch the stone. I've never had them scratch a stone. And if it does scratch a stone, that stone is probably too soft um, to be worn for wear and tear and jewelry making. But yeah, these scotch brakes have never hurt a stone. Go around the edge. And what's nice about these is that if I have a piece I haven't sold that sits kind of in storage and gets tarnished a little bit, before and, it, and before I sell it, I'll just take this, go back over it real quick, and it brightens it up. You can also use a, oh, what are those called? Um, sunshine polishing cloths. Um, to shine it up, but I find that that takes away the satin finish and really, really polishes it to a high shine. So that's just something to be aware of. Okay. And there you have it. Satin finish. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna be doing lots of tutorials this year. 
Um, so if you subscribe, you'll be sure not to miss a single one. That's Tracy Gross Design on YouTube. And if you feel like heading over to the gram, I'm on Instagram at Tracy Gross Design as well. I also have a Facebook page, Tracy Gross Design. And my website, tracygross.com. Thanks, guys. Have a great one.